Lesson for March 12th, 2017. Lesson 2. It's taken from Unit 1, which is titled God's Eternal Preserving and Renewing Love. Our lesson title is Saving Grace. Our devotional reading is found in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And our background scripture is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And our print passage is also from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And our key verse, Even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with grace, by grace Ye are saved. Ephesians 2, 5. As a result of studying this lesson, the student should be able to identify ways in which God's love addresses the separation of sin. Give thanks for God's grace, which offers new possibilities for living in human communities and demonstrate how Christians live out God's love in the world and in the communities in which they live. Saving Grace. This second chapter of the book of Ephesians begins with the conjunction and. So it is actually a continuation of the thought of chapter 1, which speaks of that tremendous power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And now it speaks of this power, this very same power is the same power that that made us the believers alive when we were dead in sin. Verses 1 through 3 states And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And you have he quickened who were dead. All those who are in their sins, they are dead in sin. Being destitute, of the principles and the power of the spiritual life. That, that they are spiritually dead and separated from God. A state of sin is, is a state of conformity to the world. Wherein in which trespasses and sins. In time past that we all walk. That, that we all live and behave ourselves in such manner as the rest of the world does. And by nature, whether we realize it or not, that, that we are bond slaves to sin and to Satan. That we are sold unto the dictates, to the will, and the command of sin and Satan. Satan, which is the power of the prince of this, of this atmosphere that we live in. 
We have to understand that the unsaved man or woman are slaves to Satan. For what? We live according, we walk according to him, according to his dictates. The course of their lives are according to his suggestions in compliance with his temptations. They are subject to him, whether they know it or not, and are led captive by him at his will. Therefore, he is called the God of this world, and that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience are those which who choose to follow Satan and disobey God. Now, we all, uh, we all were among them, and we all had our manner of life in time past, whether we be Jew or Gentile, rich or poor, educated, uneducated, white, black, that we all walked according to the dictates of the world. And we fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Psalms 14 verses uh, 2 through 3 states, states that in the Lord look down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that do it good, no, not one. And we also find in Romans 3.23 where it says that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That all mankind has sinned. Whether we realize it or not that we all have a sin nature. For it's because of Adam that sin came into the world. It said therefore by one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin. And therefore death has passed upon all men. For all have sinned. Whether whether we realize it or not. And that though we try to put sins in category. But a sin is transgression. The intrusion of self-will into the spirit of God's authority. Sin is it could just be a state of mind. Not necessarily and act, but a state of attitude that I'm going to do it my way instead of God's way. Unbelief is sin. So we see that we realize that all have sinned, but, but there is help. We find in verses 4 through 6 where it states, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But God, who is rich in mercy. Our faith our conversion, our eternal salvation are not the mere product of any natural ability nor any merit of our own. God himself is the, is the author of this wonderful change in our life. From children of wrath unto children of God seated in Christ Jesus. It is because of God who is rich in mercy. Mercy now is not giving us what we deserve. Mercy is not giving an enemy what he deserves. So we see that our God is rich in mercy. 
that he has a, a, a abundance of mercy, an unlimited amount of mercy. For Psalms 103 verses 8 through 11 states, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenty in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He have not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. As far as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. God is rich in mercy. God's eternal love towards mankind is the fountain from which all his mercies flow. For God is love. The scripture teaches us, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It is because of God's love that his mercy is, a, a, is renewed day by day. And we need to realize that, that it is not because anything that we merit or deserve or that we earn. But it is that it is because of God's love, his mercy, and his grace. And it tells us that we who were spiritually dead were made alive, quickened, were made alive, that we are saved. We are saved from the, the condemnation and the penalty of sin. That we are being saved from the habit and dominion of sin in our everyday life. And that one day we will be saved from the very presence of sin when, when we are taken out of this sinful world and, and we are in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and our in our heavenly merciful heavenly father and that and that we have a new life and that we have a new life in the spirit where that now that even though that we are still here in the sinful world that we are still in these sinful old bodies that 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 we have a new life in the spirit of god where now that 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 we can be delivered from the habit and dominion of sin in our everyday life. Where, where before we were just slaves to sin. But now in this newness of life that, that, that we can say no to sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. That God has quickened us. That he has made us alive together with Christ. And in Christ. Our spiritual lives result from our union with Christ Jesus. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. We find in Romans 6 verses 4 and 5 where it says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also walk we live in newness of life. So if we have been planted in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Christ's resurrection being the proof that he had made the full atonement for sin. And by that, that we may be justified, that we may be justified not by our works or anything that we have done or who we know. But we are justified by his blood. And that because what? Because believing the record which God gave of his son, we receive this atonement. We receive this propitiation, which is the satisfaction of God's holiness for the payment of sin. And that 
in that we are saved from a death of sin to a life of righteousness. And that we now sit positionally, though we are here on this earth, but that we now sit positionally in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That, that this is by God's grace, God's unmerited favor, something that we did not earn, that we cannot earn, and, and, and that we are worthy of, I mean, that we are unworthy of, but it's, it's because of God's love and his mercy and his grace. Verses 7 through, through 10 states that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. That in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, of his unmerited favor, that he could show all through the annals of time and history his amazing grace. God has produced for us an example. And, and that example is in his word. And, and, and one which shall be on record and has been on record through all generations. It shows us in his word how how that he quickens dead souls. That he forgives the sin of the most sinful. When he repents and believes in Christ Jesus. The apostle Paul that who the Holy Spirit used to write this book of Ephesians. The apostle Paul was one, was one of the greatest persecutors of the church. Of the early church. That, that 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 Paul would would persecute and put to death, whether it be men, women, or children, that that called upon the name of the Lord. But God showed His exceeding grace upon him when when God saved him. God saved him, and Jesus Christ was revealed to him, and so that's why. The Apostle Paul would declare in 1 Timothy 1.15 saying that this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. And not only that those examples of God exceeding grace is found in his word but, but we can look at individuals individuals in our lives and, and ourselves how that how that the change the wonderful change that that God has wrought in in believers lives as an example of his exceeding mercy and, and, and grace and, and so we see that God has left this record and so what God has done for the sinner in his world in his word will save will be served as a testimony to all ages that Christ saves unto the uttermost those that come to God through him. Whether you be a persecutor of the church, whether you be a robber, a thief, a drug addict, whore, prostitute, whatever, a murderer, that the Lord can save all those who come to him in, in, in repentance. And, 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 that, and that he saves to the uttermost. And that the exceeding riches of his grace appears in the provision that he has made salvation both for the Jew and the Gentile. That he has made 
appointed salvation through Jesus Christ for the whole world. Whether you be up or down, rich or poor, educated, uneducated, whether you be black, white, striped, or whatever, but he has, God has provided that for the whole world. That he so loved, that whosoever will let him come. And so we see that this is the exceeding riches of his Grace and his mercy and his love towards mankind. Verses 8 and 9 reads, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The believer being brought into a position of salvation. Our sins being blotted out, not to be held against us no more. We are partakers of the Holy Spirit in having the full hope, the hope full of immortality, the confident expectation. We cannot attribute to any work or merit of ours for these things that we have, the forgiveness of sin, immortality, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. None of this we can say that we earn or we deserve. But but this is given to us when when the gospel of Jesus Christ enters our heart and and we all who were dead in trespasses and, and this truth reaches us and we believe it that these things are imputed to our account. It was God's free mercy to us manifested through Christ in whom we were commanded to believe. In having believed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we received the truth and were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. That the Holy Spirit was, was the proof and, and, and that we were sealed, that, that he would live and abide with us forever. And that the seal was the proof that we are God's property. Therefore, Therefore, this salvation, this great salvation which we possess is in no sense of ourselves. But it is the free gift of God and not a work. Because all our works, the best that we can do, the best more things that we can do or the good deeds that, that we can try to perform of our own self is as filthy rags. In the sight of a holy God. So now there is no boasting. So that none of us can boast. As to having wrought out their own. Or attained their own salvation. Or even contributed in any way towards it. Well I help God. I help God. Well I, I keep myself from sin. No you don't. And salvation it is by the power of God complete from start to finish it is by the power of God we have no merit we have nothing to boast about whatsoever it is totally by the power of God and so that we need to understand and and and, and just rejoice in the fact, for it is by grace that we are saved through faith in Christ Jesus. That, that it is through Him that we have eternal salvation. And that our salvation is permanent. Why? Because we have a living Savior. That, that we have a great high priest that, 
that's in the very heaven itself in the presence of God, sitting at the right hand of God, an advocate that we have a high priest that make intercession for us, that 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 we have a we have an advocate, a lawyer that's that's in the courtroom of heaven pleading our case for when we as Christians fall and come short in seeing that what? That the, the Lord plead our case. They say that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sin, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to do what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that all this is by God's grace. God's unmerited favor. His saving grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Lord have mercy. This is what we need to be mindful of. It's not because of who we are or, or our great potential, but, it, but it's because of God's mercy and his grace. And we should always be mindful of of that. And so we see in verse 10 of our lesson where it states that for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his his workmanship. We are God's workmanship. So far is this salvation, this wonderful salvation that we have, being of our own works or granted to us for our works' sake, that we ourselves are not only the creatures of God, but our new creation was produced by God. That what we are, that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. For we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. God has saved us. Not for us just to sit around and, 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 and just enjoy the blessings or, or either that in the, in, uh, uh, <laughs> in the future sit on the cloud and just swing our legs in, in, in heaven all day. But God has created us that we might show forth the virtues of him, the virtues of God, to be imitators of Christ who called us from darkness into his marvelous light. If we say that we are in Christ Jesus, the scriptures say that we ought to walk even as he walked. Jesus say that if we say that we are his disciple, that the world will know that we are his disciples, his students, his, his followers, his imitation of his life and teaching is that they will know by one way. How? Because we love one another. Love ye one another as I have loved you. And by this way, the world will know that we are his disciples. Now, for though we are not saved by our good works or for our good works, yet we are saved that we might perform good works to the glory of God and to the benefit of men. That Jesus said that we should be his witness. To the uttermost parts of the world. Is that we can be his witness by not so much the things that we say verbally. But, but we can be a living testimony. That, that, that we can show the love that God has shown towards us. And that we can tell the world. Tell the world. Not only by word but by deed about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you.